Good evening, everyone. This is the Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide Warring Triads Finals. My name is Arusta, and my co-commentator today is Possum Morpheus. How are you doing today, Possum? Hello, hello, Arusta and friends of the Worlds Collide community. I am doing great. I am hyped for this race between two amazing runners, uh, Jackimus and Honeydew of Team Minerva and Doomgaze, respectively. Going to be an absolute banger. Absolutely. These are two of the very long-term runners in our community. I believe Jackamus has been around the community for several years at this point, and Honey is a bit of a newer runner, but has made a real impact in their time uh, here in the Worlds Collide community. Uh, getting to this point, this is the finals, if anyone's just tuning in for the first time. This is the finals of World War and Collide. Jack Jackamus was 4-4 four and four getting up to this point. Honeydew is 6-2 and two getting up to this point. So what do you know about these runners, Possum? I know quite a bit about them, actually. Uh, they're, they're both really, really heckin' good. Uh, I've raced Honeydew a fair number of times, and uh, the closest I've gotten is four seconds away from him, so he's awful dang good. Uh, <laughs> Jackamus, haven't had the pleasure of facing him yet, but if I just compare myself to these two, boy howdy, are they real, real good at this. Uh, it is really interesting, though, with regards to this particular flag set, Goddess's Edict, which they'll be running. Both runners went 0-2 before making it to brackets in Goddess's Edict. So somebody is going to either win a championship for their team or push us to a game three, since currently Team Doomgaze is already up one to zero, uh, courtesy of PB and J defeating Nobody War. So uh, it's gonna be real, real interesting to see who can get off the schneid on the Goddess's Edict flag set and, uh, and make some hay for their team. Absolutely. And if you see the little chocobo under Honeydew's name, that is because their team is up one to nothing. So today it is win or go home for Jackamus. Yeah, and uh, Jackamus, uh, he, he goes by champion Jackamus for a reason uh, on the Discord. He, he's already won, uh, you know, a, a full on tournament is a champion in his own right. So no stranger to what is happening here. Goddesses Edict, we're going to start with four characters, Terra, Realm, Strago, Mog. Uh, in particular, that Terra is very interesting. We do see Sword Tech uh, as well uh, popping out on, I believe that was Realm. But this Terra lets us just kind of, you know, go north and a little bit to the east and eventually end up across the rest of the world. And oh, hey, we're going to go loot Sealed Gate. I think this is what both runners are going to do. It just makes a whole lot of sense. Absolutely. If you have Terra, this is almost always a good first play. This gets you a lot of good loot, as we're seeing right now on Honeydew's side. And it gives you stuff. Either you find something useful or you find something to sell. Gives you a nice free check. Just a really common thing. Unfortunately, thus far, we have not seen anything that jumps off the page. A few elixirs, but nothing really valuable. Yeah, I would say the best thing there is a Zarina gown just to sell, and that's not exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, and another person uh, pointing out in chat that one of the other commands we saw was GP Rain, which is not a great command long term, but very good early in fights. It can really help you uh, drag through some early bosses because it does surprisingly good damage. Yeah, GP Rain is basically penetrating damage, doesn't care about defense, kind of just does what it does, and scales with your level. So it's not super strong at level 3. It's also not really good super late, but it is really good, uh, you know, from like level 7 to maybe 20. That's kind of, to me, where it shines, is after an, an early fight or two. Uh, I think the best loot we've seen so far now is updated to an Aegis Shield with both runners have. Um, but yeah, not a lot happening with the loot and sealed gate here. Runners are going to be hoping for a, an impact Esper here and maybe some other loot from, you know, the basement in South Figaro, uh, Albrook potentially, Stamasa even. Very curious to see where our runners go or if, you know, an early returner's hideout is on the table as well. Absolutely. And just to, since you mentioned Espers, one thing to note is that the espers in this seed, as has been going for the Warring Triads, they will not have Fire 1, 2, 3, or Ice 1, 2, 3, nor Merton. So you do get Bolt spells, you do get, I believe, Ultima. So you can have some de decent spells, but you are missing some of the staples. 
And if this is a dead check, the dead checks for Goddess Flag sets are pretty much all armor plus Thunder Shields and Mega Elixirs. So you're not going to be getting the stuff you might normally hope for, Valiant Knife, Strong Atma Weapon, something like that. Yeah, just defensive gear, but defensive gear is fine in the long term. Uh, the Magicite Bismarck could be good for our runners. We'll hope to get a peek at that sometime soon, TM. Uh, and keep an eye out and see if there's anything like an Ultima on that. See if there's anything like a Bolt 3. I think those would probably be the two best spells we could learn early on. I guess Flare would be okay as well since it's non-elemental damage. And we do need to be concerned about statues in the long term as well. Uh, looks like Honeydew did decide Albrook is on the menu here. I, I like this route myself. I love going Sealed Gate to Albrook, so big fan of, of this routing here. We see a couple things for sale. Rename cards tells me there might be some Colosseum in Honeydew's future as well. Looks like he is selling the Elixir here, selling a Murasame, buying uh, 41 sleeping bags. I don't think we'll have any issues with healing outside of battle now. Absolutely. Meanwhile, Jackamus is going up to Narsh, which uh, with is often a very early play for the loot, but as well with Mog here, you can get the check as well if you want to go up there. The one risk with going up for Mog's check is you probably want to be able to combine that with Kefka at Narsh. So at level three, without any real offense found thus far, probably not something you, you want to start all this time. You can do the looting and get it started, but probably don't want to run all up there for it. Yeah, it's interesting you bring that up, and and the reason is Jackimus did exactly this against Gar, where he went up here and took a very early Kefka Narsh, uh, and he was ultimately victorious against Gar in the semifinals. Uh, part of that, you know, was some some real weird misfortune for both runners, but that aggressive play early on by Jackimus allowed him to get through Kefka Narsh. And his opponent had to come, or, you know, didn't go up there, saved it for later. And I wonder if that was partially a, uh, you know, a, a reason for getting through that. Also, an early EXP egg for Jackamus. If Honeydew does not find that, that is a huge advantage to Jack. It was an early, an early EXP egg, and the other thing as well, a dragoon horn and a dragon, dragoon boots. Which, with Mog, you can basically turn Mog into a jumper if you find a spear, which he can equip most of the good ones. So that's an alternative path to some power as well. And a cat hood for sale. So money is not going to be an issue long term. So this Narsh is one of the Narshes of all time. Definitely a huge hit for Jack here. A Genji helmet for Honeydew resets out from the Zen Thief. 15k says, I'll keep the 15k. That is something he can go back for later if he wants to up his scaling. But early on, I like resetting out of that to keep the scaling down and keep the the characters able to hit the bosses harder and faster, as well as just regular enemies. So that is definitely a heads-up play, I would say, from Honeydew to not mess up his scaling early on. And it is especially important in these goddess flags, because when you hit seven checks, that's when you get auto-overcast over, and auto-condemned, which... For those not familiar, basically you start every fight with a timer of 60 seconds or less, depending on your speed. And when you die, whether due to that doom or due to, you know, getting hit in the face, your character becomes a zombie and you have to revivify them. You can't just use Phoenix Downs or Life, Life 2 like you normally would. So that's also a reason to sort of keep your scaling in check. You'll never get this force armor. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he, he won't. probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we need to increase checks to get to, you know, the 21 or uh, I'm not sure if it's 21 on this particular seed. Let's take a look and see uh, here. It looks like it is 21 on this particular seed. So 21 checks. We could get like Zen Thief and the second Moogle check as a way to increase things. It does look like we get Mute off of Golem and Exone off of Bismarck. Was that quick as well on Bismarck? Bismarck, I'm uh, yes, sure it I was. And so basically, with Golem and Mute and X Zone, that is basically all the utility ish items you would want for Final Kefka. So that's a very good start there. Obviously, you need damage, but all the stuff that you'd want just it to help you out. So good to have. Yeah, and on Jack's side, it will be interesting to see who ends up getting the speed long term. 
We definitely would love to see Mog as a jumper get that speed Esper and have it for a while. Looks like he is not going to go through and do Kefka and Narsh, though, going to head on elsewhere. Uh, looks like no Moogle Charm equipped, though, and we have some Vaporites. Shouldn't be too hard to dispatch here, get a couple levels. Yeah, I like this because, as you may, we mentioned, GP Rain benefits a lot from scaling, also Mog's jump, and going from three to probably about seven, eight, maybe higher in one or two battles here. So that'll really help if he wants to do the Kefka at Narsh. Yeah, that first fight, not what he wanted. It was only like 360 XP, which is probably level four, maybe level five. Not exactly where he wants to be. Uh, Lunaris going to be a couple of wolves here. These are also not super great, but they're going to be better than the Vaporites, I believe. Oh. Yeah, 990 XP and one howl from uh, our restreamer. Thank you, Saberwolf. Meanwhile, Honeydew going with a slightly more traditional path of going through South Figaro here for items. I don't believe we've seen anything that jumps off the page here. So Honeydew sort of still looking for some power. Yeah, Honeydew's also been buying a ton of small things along the way. And those small things basically are... Uh, uh, you know, for the Coliseum. He's telegraphing that pretty hard. Uh, hi, by the way, uh, have you met Magimaster? Because uh, Jack has. And uh, do we have an elemental shield to throw? Do we have anything to get through this? Uh, nothing to get through it in a hurry. Okay. When's the last time Jack saved? And why do I think it was at Kefka and Arsh? Or before Kefka and Arsh and before those two encounters? So I think he's got to do those two random encounters again, uh, but he should. Yeah, yeah he'll he'll be able to to skip that Magi Master at least knows where it is, and you know we'll be able to move on from there. Unless he really feels like he wants to take that Magi Master, but I can't imagine that's going to be the case. No, I mean especially in the spot that it's in, it's an area that you can get back to very easily later in the seed if you decide to come back for it. But I do like no the play. To of, arch. Yeah, I do like the play though of going to check it while you're there, because if that had been an easy boss, you could very easily kill it, get back up, and that would get you through your Kefka and Arsh. And we have a giant enemy that Jack is fighting. Not going to do a ton in the way of damage. Uh, to his party. Looks like we are sketching an uppercut, which did not hit. And we'll see if we're able to make some hay with this uh, this giant enemy. While Honeydew still continuing a very aggressive loot route, uh, going through and getting a ton of boxes, just looting all over the place. Uh, and I really think that he is going to, uh, to make a play on the Coliseum sooner than later here, because he's just got so much in his inventory that he can try to pawn off and trade for goods and services. Absolutely, and the other thing is that Honeydew also, for all this looting, has not actually found anything that really will help him do damage or get through the seed thus far. A lot of nice items, but nothing like great. Yeah, and chat pointing out that swapping the EXP egg to Realm, it is possible we take another crack at this Magi Master just off the power of GP rain. That would still be very aggressive, though. My concern would still just be, do we have the defense? Do we have the levels to survive Magi Master's attacks? Maybe off of these double dark forces, uh, we can get through it. But without saving beforehand, that's kind of spooky. And looks like Jackamus does leave. He's not going to uh, fool around with that Magi Master a second time, at least not without saving first. Yeah, and at this point, his levels are probably good enough, could go take pretty much any check he wants that's not a Magi Master, so might go to a different check, maybe this Sleet River that we see Honeydew doing. Looks like Esper Mountain, which I, I always like Esper Mountain as an early play, because it's a quick, quick check. You can get a couple chests along the way if you choose to. Very nice yeah. starter. And those double dark forces gave almost 5,000 XP. Just a huge encounter for Jack. They they got him to level 14, I believe, on his characters, other than Realm, who's at level 18. 
So he's going to be able to very easily clear through some of these checks here. May fade let, uh, Leap River forever as well. May just say, no, I'm good. I don't want to do that because I have my levels already. And while we see Honeydew going through and doing this check, relying on Dispatch, a little bit of GP rain, and some uh, some random punches here. So definitely Jack has the early level advantage, even with that wipe. Honeydew definitely has the Coliseum advantage if there's something good in there. So we shall see how our runners are able to progress. While Jack also has that cat hood, which is getting him money too. Absolutely. And so we see the three stooges here. This is not a great fight to get early. I don't I think with the levels, Jack should be fine, but among fights you, you see early, this is not really one you want to see. No, this is particularly annoying because they're going to have a fair bit of HP. The Pearl Wind comes out, 1235 on everyone. Uh, and we had already dealt about 360 damage to the red dude. So that means that they have about 1500 apiece, I want to say. Uh, or at least 1500 on the red guy. That is kind of spooky, but Mog hits a triple jump all on the, the, the top uh, triplet there. That is going to do a lot of work towards getting that, that one taken care of. And you always want to knock him down first because he will cast life two on his friends. So... Uh, Curly does go down. That's huge for Jack to get through this. Mog really helping out with those jumps. Yeah, and a really nice strategy there to wait trick while the boss was slowly dying, just that cut down a little bit on enemies' attacks. It's going to be even more, more valuable as we go forward, because once you get that auto-condemned, you want to be in the menu as much as you can when you're not just actually trying to gain ATB, just because that does stop your condemn timer. Yeah, absolutely. And Return of the Dark Force. Uh, Honeydew says, I am out, though, and does not take the Dark Forces. So that is going to continue the, the level advantage for Jack, as that's a, a huge bit of XP there missed out by Honeydew, but also a scary encounter. Absolutely, and looks like Jack is going to stop here in Thamasa. I like this play. Very good very worth doing. I mean, the shops are all kind of clustered together. You can get a few chests along the way. Just a nice uh, early play here if you're looking for items still. Yeah, and speaking of stop, we also saw stop on the Esper Phantom. So we have stop, we have mute, we have golem, we have instant death via X-Zone. Literally everything you want to control, final Kefka, we have already, which is very surprising this early into a seed. So huge for, for our runners. And looks like uh, Honeydew took a reset. Not certain what it was. I didn't see it. Doom looks like it was boss. Doomgaze and he's level 10 on everyone. So he's going to need to to figure something out here. So I think he's going to be taking those Dark Forces that he passed on earlier. My concern is that his party ends up on level 15. I really hope that doesn't happen because that would be super awkward. Yeah, and I believe Honeydew does have a save from before the river, but that's quite a time loss if you had to go all the way back to that. Yeah, that would be pretty catastrophic. We see 3,800 XP come out there. And it is going to be real interesting to see what we end up at level-wise now. But Honeydew does get through that encounter. And we have Burning House from Jackamus here. So going to push that level advantage even harder. Uh, Goblins and Figalies here. This is not going to be too difficult with uh, GP rain. And we'll give a fair bit of XP as well. And so level 13, attempt number two on Doomgaze coming in for Honeydew. Let's hope that we have uh, have a good way to get through this. While Jackamus is just deciding that uh, money solves all issues, the combination of GP Rain and a Cat Hood is absolutely huge for Jackamus. He's never going to run out of money at this point which is a concern that Honeydew could potentially have. So uh, Jackham is going to be able to just plow through this burning house. Yeah, and as well, I don't know if you noticed, but did learn quick, did learn stop. So 
can uh, flip around espers to keep learning stuff. Oh, looks like both of his primary espers have speed plus two, so everybody's going to be running fast. And Jack just cruising through that burning house, almost got through that hallway and the next room, uh, does run into one encounter. I doubt he's going to mind that, but really nicely done to get through. And speaking of nicely done to get through, Doomgaze is down on Honeydew's side. No magic points. Unfortunately, just a red cap as a reward. So Honeydew is definitely behind the eight ball at the moment to Jackamus. It is a long race, though, and our runners do need seven characters and ten espers. So absolutely not out of it yet. Just definitely uh, not the start that Honeydew was hoping for. Yeah, meanwhile, Jack picking up a couple extra chests, getting a Hyper Wrist, which is actually nice to have but not a whole lot else. And it looks like he was trying to avoid that encounter. Uh, of course, the one encounter he's unable to avoid decides to show up and back attack him because that's just how things work. Nothing too scary happening here, though. The health command comes out. We're back up and running. No big deal. Yeah, meanwhile, on Honeydew's side, Honeydew's going to get uh, his Dragoon set and his experience eggs so we're gonna see what what they do choose to do there see maybe honey might go up and do like what jack did but probably be able to make it through as a higher level yeah he'll definitely be able to get through kefka and narsh he'll be able to get through moogle defense well i say definitely he should be able to the question is can he get through the wealth check because that magi master is still kind of spooky when we're relying on just gp range Speaking of annoying things, though, uh, we have found another very annoying boss when we don't have real good single target. Uh, this is Rexel. We have GP Rain, which is AoE. We have Quadra Slice, which is AoE. Basically, all of our good stuff, including our jumper, is also AoE. So you can control the first jump, but you can't control the second or third or fourth jump. Mog cooperating, though, lands two jumps on Rexel. Another hit comes out, and Rexol goes away. So very quickly dispatched by Jackmas. Yeah, and Realm actually doing surprisingly good physical damage there. About 800 just with smacking with the stick. Just because, uh, I mean, she's got a lot of levels. Oh, and there's a Thunder Shield. Not what you want, but as dead checks go, that's actually better than a red cap, at least. And Honeydew does see he does not have a great way to deal with this silly little... Magi Master that has shown up, so it is going to be GP Rain and Dispatch. A thousand from the GP Rain, about 600 from the Dispatch, and he's just going to have health to keep everyone alive. So hopefully, Magi Master doesn't pop off with some sort of real annoying X magic or some sort of high ability that you just wouldn't expect him to have right now. Yeah, meanwhile, Jack going to do the Zozo check. I actually like this as an early check if you're going to do it with Terra. I mean, it does take a little longer than you hope because of what we're about to see with the Congo line, but you get a few little pots and chests along the way. And if you have a warp stone, getting out of there is, of course, easy. And Celeste is in the party now. Looks like Honeydew values her. And that makes a lot of sense. Says, goodbye, old man. Don't have any place for you on my team. We have a whole lot of stuff on this this celeste for her lures but we're missing quasar and grand train and all that we did pick up sour mouth which can be useful in conjunction with eye drops against the uh gosh katana soul thinking of the name of the most important monster in a box uh so yeah one of those things where honeydew has some utility there but that's a whole lot of lures that don't really do a lot yeah and Jack actually did learn Muddle off, uh, I believe, the Golem Esper, so Jack has that option as well, should should he decide to hunt down an offering. Definitely, and well, you know, once we get access to monsters and boxes as well, because our characters right now don't exactly give us any of that. No Sabin, no Strago, excuse me, no Shadow, no one really that gives us access to any of those. We see Inferno here, and uh, Quad Nines come out, and uh, goodbye Inferno. Yeah, and I like that. I like that play by Jack as a quick. Uh, looks like we lost Jack, but I was going to say I like that play with the uh, Thunder Shield to just get past Inferno because Inferno can be kind of annoying and take time. 
with those three parts wasting time on attack. So, you know, even though Thunder Shields are nice to have, sometimes it's nicer to just be done with the battle and get out of there. So I like that play. Meanwhile, as we try to get Jack back, let's uh, continue talking. Honeydew, going to set up a party, put uh, Strago on his own little party there. And we'll see what we have here. It is no worth noting that if it was a character, we would have seen the character standing there. So it could be an Esper or it could be a dead check. We're not really sure at this point. Yeah, it is also worth noting to add on to that, that Honeydew is currently a five and two. And what we mean by that is five characters and two Espers. He needs to get to seven and 10 to unlock his go mode, his final Kefka fight, basically. So he only needs two more characters. He needs eight more Espers. This is a chance for him to basically go through and take, I don't know what the odds are exactly, but let's call it a 50-50, uh, maybe a little higher than that. But he has a decent chance at minimum of going through and getting an Esper from this check. Additionally, if he wanted to take random encounters here, he could peek them and take random encounters. Looks like he's opting not to, just going to fly by, and that is perfectly acceptable as well. Gets to skip there at Kefkit and Arshin is rewarded with Atma. So this is a cool boss to find insofar as it gives a lot of XP and magic points, but not exactly, you know, ideal if it has some, some really rude abilities. It probably doesn't, but you never know. And we do have Jack back. Uh, has four party members still and is currently now in, it looks like, Zen. We'll see if he was able to purchase the Zen Thief item or not. Regardless, though, uh, he is buying a couple of items here and going to be carrying on. And from Zen, looks like he's going to do some re-equipping. Doesn't look like he got that Genji shield based on his equipment here. No, but with the 4-4, it looks like there probably was a Esper behind whatever was at the Dataluma spot. So we'll find out next time he checks what's up. Looks like uh, might be going to the Realm check here. We shall see. I don't believe as far as we know that he has gone to check Coliseum, though he has bought a few things. So might be a check he makes. Might be a play if he still feels like he needs more items later on. And Honeydew getting Ragnarok the Esper. Very nice. I would bet he'd prefer Ragnarok the weapon, but it's okay. <laughs> it is okay, and unfortunately in the settings of this seed, Ragnarok the weapon is not available via dead checks. That is true. And my favorite game of what are our random encounters going to be today? I'm hoping that uh, that Jack does actually check the boxes here. I have a feeling he won't, though. But it looks like uh, he is going to proceed now. Just take the required one, not the extras. Does get Hades, Gigas, and Harvester. Uh, GP Rain will be perfectly fine for this, while Honeydew is going through and doing his Moogle defense. All right, and as you can see, it is a Moogle at the bottom of Moogle Defense. That means it's not a character, because if it was a character, we would have seen them, but could be an Esper or an item. We don't know yet. And we see Ifrit here. Another fight that GP Rain is just fine for. We won't have access to Ice Magic, but we can still Dispatch, do non-elemental penetrating damage there, basically ignoring the defense of the enemy. And GP Rain and Dispatch will get us through this fight no problem on Jack's side. And we have Narapa the Rappa on Honeydew's side. Gonna try to see if he can outpace the Condemns. Nope, unable to. And uh, Narapa is going to, uh, to get those Condemns off. Waste a bunch of Honeydew's time. But a very easy fight to get through. 
you know, learning stop and mute, so got some of the late game spells already already ready for him there on Jack's side. And Ausers gives us Starlit. Uh, I can't remember if Starlit is completing, or rather, is able to give HP in battle, I think it is, like a Cure 2 style, or if it's a Remedy 1. But either way, it's probably not getting used by our runners, which is completely fine. And that was Jack's seventh check, so does get the auto overcast and auto condemn. And so what that means, uh, as Arusta had explained before, any time one of his characters perishes now, they are going to turn into a zombie. Uh, we do see an Aura Lance in this shop. Aura Lance is fantastic for that jumper. I just don't think Jack has the loot to buy it. Yeah, and that's sort of what that pause is for. Probably just trying to remember how much money he has and how much he has to sell. Starlet, pretty much useless. It is HP healing if you need it. It's basically the health command that they already have, so... Probably will never get equipped at all. And we see Honeydew hitting up the Coliseum. This was something that he telegraphed pretty aggressively. He was buying a whole bunch of weird random items, and looks like uh, not a whole lot happening. There's an ice shield in there, but that's a whole lot of random garbage is what that is. Yeah, a couple breakables. There were thunder rods and ice shields, but nothing really. Probably nothing worth the time. And we got a Fanatic's Tower peek out of Jack. Nothing doing at this time for him there. And looks like he is now going to go to Mobilism, take on this check, or at least peek it first. You're not going to take Galloway, are you? I certainly believe Jackamus is going to be taking Galloway. Absolutely. I have not been tracking dried meat, but I know Jack has done quite a bit of shopping, so I assume probably has some at some point. Meanwhile, if you watched as he entered that building there, one little trick is that if you head left immediately after coming through the door, you skip the whole dog cutscene. Saves a few seconds. All you have to do is go left. Well, we see a pearl lance in a shop as well. Honeydew says, I will take that. Uh, does not know of the existence of the aura lance yet, so this makes a lot of sense. He says, that's good enough to get this mod going. Let me get that pearl lance and the dragoon horn, excuse me, dragoon boots and dragon horn on. And let me send this young Mog a jumpin'. And Honeydew Wist, <clears throat> excuse me, Celeste in hand says, I would like to check the cell, see if maybe this is another character, as characters do have a penchant for gating other characters in Worlds Collide. Could also be an Esper, could be a Zonk. It is an Edgar. Edgar is going to open up some cheap shops. Has 48 Vigor. That is a lot of Vigor to start with. But Honeydew, at least for now, says, I'm good. I don't have anything for you, King. You can uh, you can go rule the kingdom. And we don't need you for right now. And just an Ultros on Jack's side. This is an Ultros that its friend, Chupon. And it will not give any XP, any magic points. Just going to... Get it cold and then sneeze and then the fight's going to end. Absolutely. And one thing to note there as well is that Honeydew did that check in the World of Rune, so could do additional looting there. It's one of those nice little minor optimizations that's worth doing. If you've already looted one, you flip over and loot, loot the second one. Looks like Honeydew going to do the Magitek Factory here. So this is very common play especially since he's at six six characters out of seven but needs a bunch of espers. The first two are pretty quick checks. And then if you want to do the third, the third is guaranteed progression, but it does take a little while because you have to do several fights on the way and then fight, the fight two bosses at the end. Probably worth doing at this stage since it's guaranteed progression and it's a lot of experience, but we'll see what Honeydew chooses to do. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's not bad at all. Go through, take on three checks, get usually at a minimum two pieces of progression. It's very rare where you end up with full on, you know, Magitek Zonks where you Zonk one and two and only get progression out of three. If that were to happen, it would be very unfortunate for Honeydew, but it would also help with his scaling where he would be you know, almost guaranteed the 21 check skip at that point. He'd be getting a ton of XP as he goes throughout the seed. So at this point, you almost want to get 
you want to increase your scaling so that you're getting more XP and whatnot. Whereas on Jackamus' side, he's going down the Serpent Trench, which is a little surprising uh, considering the, the characters that he has and the checks available. But at the same time, he picked up Gao. He may want to go through and, you know, just complete those Gao checks. These are not fun, though. Uh, the, any, you know, Coverts, Ninjas, Ogors, all of those enemies are gross. That GP rain only did 84 on Jack's side. I believe that means we're out of money. Yeah, I believe Jack did spend a lot of money. Oh, as well, uh, one 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 little thing that chat pointed out, which is worth noting, is uh, Ribbon is a bit of a liability in the Goddess Seeds because you can't revivify a zombie with Ribbon. So uncursing the Curse Shield is a bit more of a gamble than it would be in a normal seed. So thanks for PB&J, please, who's, uh, I believe, Honeydew's teammate, if I remember That's right. That's correct. Yep. Thanks for the pointing it out there. And we see an Esper Palador has Doom. Yet another functional Esper. We already have Exxon, but Doom is slightly more accurate. So a lot of real good things there. And Realm picked up Bolt 3 on Jack's side. That's a real big deal. A level 3 spell is huge in almost any flag set. But especially here where your magic options are more limited, sign me up for that Bolt 3 as soon as I can have it on. As many people as I can have it on. And it looks like we had Tunnel Armor for Honeydew at the first spot. We have Vargas and his Friendly Bears at the second spot. This is another kind of awkward fight because all of our damage is AoE. And you kind of just want to target down Vargas and ignore the Bears at this level. Later on, when their abilities scale, where Claw will do things like deal three to 5,000 damage, not good at all. But early on, you kind of just want to ignore them and wipe out the boss. Looks like Honeydew is through Vargas while Jackamus is doing battle uh, with a Ryos, which is a Chimera-type enemy. Mog has two more HP than he needs, uh, and that's also another 13,000 gold for Jackamus. So he's now uh, got his money situated again. We'll be able to use GP Rain. Pick up Zone Seek. That has Ultima Bolt 3, Haste 2, Life 3. Life 3 doesn't do anything on this flag set, but that's a heck of an Esper there on Honeydew's side. We might even see a dragon now to try to get that Ultima online. So a huge pickup for Honeydew there while we get, I believe that was the Kirin Esper on Jackamus' side. Didn't see what that one had, but I'd be hard pressed to guess it's as good as the one Honeydew got. So it had Strength plus two, and then I believe it also had Meteor, which Meteor is not a great spell, but it is non-elemental damage if you've already got it equipped, so never hurts to learn it. Ooh, meanwhile, yeah. Jack finding enhancers, which kind of surprised he didn't pick one up. And there's dried meat for Jack as well. So always funny when Nakia has the dried meat because you have to do the trench check going from the Velt to Nakia. Then you have to go from Nakia back to the Velt. The Velt also at this stage is slightly awkward uh, insofar as you... You're just going to be pulling enemies that you fought from all over the place now. So going to be kind of weird on Jack's side what he could run into because it's likely not going to be a Lobo at this stage. Uh, to answer a question from chat, what's so good about Enhancers? Magic plus seven. Uh, that is what is good again, uh, about Enhancers. So uh, any bit of magic boost is great. Maybe a little less relevant on someone like Realm who's got 54 magic already. But if you want to get someone from like 31 to 38, that's a much bigger jump or get like a cyan from 22 to 29. You know, that's the type of difference where it really kicks in. We'll see what Jack gets here from the, the Velt Lottery. He gets back attacked, which means he cannot get the uh, dried meat check to even populate here. So he's just going to try to get out of dodge, 
move away from this while Honeydew finds some harvesters that he has to contend with in the Magitek factory. Yeah, and one thing to note about the belt is it is guaranteed progression, which will be either a character or Esper, along with Honeydew doing Magitek 3 as guaranteed progression. So both runners are going to come away with something useful from what they're doing right now. And oh boy, here's yet another boss that is annoying when all of your damage is AoE. Uh, it is Welk. You don't want to hit the shell, you want to hit the head, but when your damage is who knows what, uh, it's going to go who knows where. And looks like the Honeydew's getting about 50-50 on everything here right now, which is not the odds you want. While Jack is going to get 100% on this dried meat, and he's going to pick himself up an Esper, we know it's not a character because it would show the character. So he gets the Shiva Esper, and we'll see what that's got on it. Tier 3 and Mag Power 1, that's a big pickup as well. Yeah, and that goes right on the Realm, which makes perfect sense, because Realm is the one who has his Bolt 3 already. So, very good to max that out. And looks like we got a Pearl proc on Honeydew's side from Mog that is uh, not ideal. Could keep trying to attack the shell, but says, wait a second, we don't want to do that. Uh, Mog, we might wait for you and then queue up a jump or queue up a health in the meantime. And Jack, meanwhile, going to go back to World of Balance Narsh, it looks like. And he's going to go play with Magimaster to try to get that Celeste. That would be character six for him. Yeah, meanwhile, one thing that was pointed out in chat, if you noticed during that belt check that the NPC had Condemn, that's actually tied to the reason you can only have three characters when you do that check, because it's actually considered part of your party. So it gets the same Condemn status you have, like Auto Condemn in this case, and that's why you can't have four characters walking in there, because it's considered, you know, an ally. Meanwhile, on Honeydew's side, we can now see the effects of the Auto Condemn when that got down to zero. Realm died and turned into a zombie, so have to revivify. And unfortunately, that is <laughs> that is one of the things about Welk as a you know, or other bosses like that, maybe Charter Nook, where they just waste time, is that you can't normally you would just wait trek the entire fight to avoid having things turn around like that, but when you have have to let the ATB go, you have to let that counter go down as well. So worth noting on Jackamus' side, looks like we have a Sword Tech 6 Mage uh, in Terra here. A little bit of a scary thing happening here, though. Well, two things. One, this Magimaster is scaled up, and he's doing mean X magic things. And two, Mog is in the air jumping in his own party. And now also jumping at Magimaster. So that's fine. Uh, but this stunner is doing a ton of work here. And yep, that is Magimaster down. So well done to Jack. Looks like Honeydew has found some fish. I think these are flying fish, but these are fish nonetheless that will be uh, dealt with very rapidly, or, you know, as rapidly as it can be. This is actually a kind of scary check on this flag set, though. The reason being, the fish are on a timer, and so are you. And so you have to wait for the timer to basically come up on the big fish Rizapass to show up, and it's anywhere from 5 to 55 seconds. Well, guess what also hits about 55 seconds? Your Condemn Timer. So there are situations where you can basically get fish locked, uh, as I like to call it, but this is not one of them, and Honeydew dispatches Rizza Pass quite easily. Yeah, meanwhile, Jack picking up that Celeste. Jack is about level 40, so those are pretty much final Kefka levels. Could probably use maybe one more piece of uh, damage. Has bolt three, has a jumper. I think can rotate that bolt three around, but you'd kind of like at least one more source of physical damage just because, you know, one of the things at the end is going to be Goddess, who is immune to all that. Or, to immune, excuse me, immune to your bolt. So you need a third source of physical damage just to make sure you don't get walled there. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the party arrangement for both the runners once they get to statue time. Uh, with the espers that we have and the, the abilities that those espers have had with stop and mute and, you know, multiple instances of, of uh, instant death, all these nice creature comforts that you don't always get in every seed, these runners are going to have no problem with Kefka itself. 
the issue that I can foresee is the statues. And so, like, on Jack's side, he's got that Terra set up just doing big, big damage with that uh, that stunner, that Sortex 6. That's going to clear a lane by itself. And you honestly hope it ends up being Poltergeist because it's vulnerable to stop, which can come out from the stunner ability. So for Jack, one lane is taken care of there. Potentially even a second lane could be taken care of with GP Rain if he really wants to push that and then kind of figure it out with the third lane. So we'll see how he handles that. Whereas Honeydew has access to that ultimate Esper. We'll see how many people learn that and if he can find things like economizers, gold hairpins, crystal orbs, anything like that. But meanwhile, Jackamus is going to be at 7-7 seven and seven, uh, with that Edgar pickup. So he is uh, looking real good here. Just needs three more Espers. Absolutely, especially since uh, Magitek 1 and 2 were both Espers. Actually, all three were Espers, but most notably 1 and 2, because at that point, Jack would be at 7-9. So that might be a case where you bail out and, you know, look for faster progression or you just finish off Magitek free. So Jack is in very good shape right now. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if he goes to the throne for Edgar first. If that's a Magitek, excuse me, a Magitek, a Magisite, then Magitek Factory would absolutely be the play here. Uh, having those two checks right up front where if they're Esper's great, you can warp out. If they're not Esper's great, you can warp out anyway. So I would expect, especially if this is an Esper for it to be Magitek Factory, but even if it's not, it's still probably Magitek Factory. That is a Setzer. I think you take Setzer here because he's got Search Disguise and Calling It In. That's two very fast checks as well. So I think that's very prudent of Jack to take that Setzer, even though he doesn't need a seventh character. That's going to be very quick checks that he can just plow right through. While well, Honeydew is getting a little bit of the business from the, the triplets here, Celeste has been turned into a zombie. Uh, the blue guy has finally gone down, so Curly and Larry are done. Just Mo remains. Looks like we're having to revivify Chain here a little bit, though, and that's kind of spooky. But if this revivify pops and then Mog lands, everyone should get XP here. Barring death counters. Yeah, and one thing to note as well is that... Ooh. ooh, that is not great. But one thing to note is that the skip is at 12 character, excuse me, 12 espers and 10 characters, so quite a ways away. Now Jack's at 9, so... Ooh. That's a thrower as well on, on Jack's side, but a little bit too late, it appears. But that is now 9 characters, I believe, for Jack, uh, having quickly picked up Setzer and Shadow potentially could get the skip at characters if, let's say, Shadow's check is a a character, his free one at uh, Gao's Manor. So it'll be very interesting to see if that's a play that Jack makes. Could just get the skip off of that and just be in full Esper Hunt mode then. I like uh, stopping at the Gao's house here because it's so fast, but I think after this, the play is absolutely Magitek Factory because... You go, you go two, you find the, well, it's three checks. First two are espers, which he needs. And then, you know, at that point you go and you stay for guaranteed progression because it's either your skip, which is great, or it's your 10th esper, which is Kafka, which is great. So yeah, it looks like Jack's doing exactly that. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, I actually think that he's going to take the first two and warp out here. I don't think he's going to skip around for the third. I think that he's going to warp out because he's got so much else available to him that's peekable and quicker than the, all of Magitek Factory. He's got Search the Skies, he's got Cave on the Velt uh, as two checks right away that are either peekable or very fast. And he does take the thrower into his party. So brings aboard that throw Natural Magic Shadow, who is absolutely loaded. Uh, you know, doesn't have the stats on him per se, but throw is just such a good command. And we have a ton of levels and we have an EXP egg, so... This makes a lot of sense on Jack's side. It does look like Jack is at 15 checks right now. Honeydew is at 11. And looks like uh, this is uh, this is kind of Jack's race to lose at the moment. Just being way more efficient. Not that Honeydew's doing anything wrong. But that XP egg earlier was huge. And just being able to get his levels going from that Dark Force fight in particular was huge. 
Let River also zonking out for Honeydew was uh, was a big uh, you know shot in the arm for Jack, if you will, really giving him that advantage over Honeydew. Because that Let River zonk is just really unfortunate on Honeydew's side. Still especially, coming back to haunt him a little. Especially since Honeydew, you know, ran into the Doom Gaze at level ten yep. and had to reset and go back not just to the previous save, but a save back to fight an extra fight just to get off that level. So yeah. definitely costing there. Flame Eater Whoa. is kind of a big ball of ew. Um we don't have magic to go after the big orb itself. We can go after the bomblets, that's fine but going to have to clear them out first, which thankfully we're able to do on Honeydew's side, and now going to put forth some AoE that's not actually going to have any additional targets. So very nicely done with the Bolt 3 into some other moves here first to just sweep out that primary uh, set of bomblets there. Absolutely. Meanwhile, Jack showing off the power of Bolt 3 against machines. Basically one-shotting tunnel armor. Going to get uh, his 8th Esper here, and then after this, his ninth Esper. Yeah, meanwhile, Honeydew going to show us some new information. He has that Edgar, which Jack does not. So let's see what we get. We did learn Osmos, which is good on Honeydew's side as well. Osmos, and more importantly, Ultima. Yeah, Ultima's cool, Osmos is great, Force Armor is very much not what Honeydew needed here. Uh, falling further and further behind the 8-ball, and, uh, you know, this is, I would say, pretty safely right now. This is Jack's race to lose at this point. Absolutely. Let's see if uh, Honeydew plays this out, because there are still, there is still the Ancient Castle ancient castle check a lot of times people will combine that and i don't don't believe uh honeydew got the esper which he'll get right here but you do also get a dragon should you choose that yeah and you bring up dragons we haven't really talked about them basically at all uh the dragons on this flag set you do three of them you get auto shell you do four you get auto haste though they're they're good abilities but they're not you know great abilities so our runners aren't really factoring dragons into the mix at least not early on here uh, and it does look like we are getting a warp stone out on jack's side so uh, this is what i expected to happen here was he gets up to his ninth esper now and then he's going to go do things like search the skies for example i think that is going to be in play for him uh, but he also has the ability to peek cave on the veld so it looks like he's going to opt for the peekable first before going to search the skies, uh, which is perfectly reasonable as well. Has warp stones to get out of here. And thankfully, we don't have wire remove on, so there will be no wire removing of the dog today. Sounds yeah, and it fine. is worth noting <laughs> that at this level, with uh, 9 needing 10 for skip, Jack will almost certainly take it even if it's character because the skip once you've walked all the way through here, is worth the time it takes you to fight the boss. Even if you feel like, hey, you want to deal like full right and knock out the knock out, you know, a couple bit old bosses before coming back for skip, skip still saves you time there. So it's definitely worth doing. Oh, and honeydew. Well, it got a got a magicite, so that's a good start. But Jack just found his tenth Esper. A mutant flare, another Esper with good stuff on it. Uh, no shortage of really good abilities on these espers. Unfortunately for Honeydew, he's just finding things in the wrong order. Uh, and this dragon not playing nice either. Jack, meanwhile, what could possibly be here that could even slow him down? Uh, not really even sure. Umaro is definitely not going to be it. Uh, Umaro going to have like a green cherry and things like that. And it's kind of going to be whatever. We have 20 ninja stars on Jack's side as well, so even better than shurikens. So that really makes that thrower quite, quite powerful. That tackle does come out and absolutely bops Terra, who bops back though with a man-eater and deals almost 5,000 damage. I believe that was a man-eater anyway. While Honeydew has dispatched the white dragon, gets a second pearl lance, gets another force armor. Uh, not really what he needed. Didn't want that first force armor from the tentacle room and certainly didn't want this second one 
Let me see. Umaro pops off, takes Terra down, so no extra levels for Terra here. But Jack does get through, and that is going to be his Kefka unlock. Uh, do we know what he's at for check count? Uh, he was at 15, and that was before Magitek, so I think he's at 18 now, so three away. All right, so yeah, that's going to take him a couple of checks away. Certainly, he should still be going for skip, I'd imagine. Does pet the dog, so well done to Jackamus for winning the seed officially at a time of about 52 minutes and 30 seconds. Oh, wait, no. Uh, but yes, thank you, Jack, for petting the dog and not why removing it. We appreciate you. Yeah, and I do like stopping here. Whether you're going to Kefka's Tower right now or not, this is probably one of your last chances to shop, so it's worth... Ooh, and there you go. Fire Rods and Ice Rods. Kind of surprised yeah. he, didn't, he didn't spend the money on those, because GP Rain is no longer your main, main path through the seed. Yeah, he does go back for a couple Fire Rods. I do like that. That shop would have been incredible to find about 53 minutes ago, uh, given that we're now 53 minutes into the seed. It's just one of those where rods, they do fall off a little bit. However, they give him access to magic that he doesn't have insofar as he now has fire damage he can do instead of just having lightning damage. So that could mean if one of his characters ends up against, let's say, Goddess and they're relying on Bolt, he now at least has some way to get through and, and push damage, which will be really good. Yeah, but now seeing where Jack goes, that sort of explains why he did... He was hesitant to buy because I believe we're about to see him purchase a spear for Mog. Yeah, he took a moment earlier when he saw that aura lance. I assume to either write it down or type it out somewhere, but he had an extended pause in that shop uh, to jot down that aura lance, which makes sense because that is the best lance you're going to find for that young Moogle. So it definitely was a prudent thing to take note of and a prudent thing to go back and pick up. Uh, we do see we are getting a right side Terra and Celeste, a middle Mog, and a left side Setzer. So we are not going for the skip, it looks like. I think this is just going to be run and gun all three lanes. And is valuing the ladies to take out both of the extra spots, the Inferno spot and the Guardian spot, giving his thrower one lane and his jumper another. So very interesting to see here from Jack not going for that skip potentially a little bit dangerous here depending on where the statues line up but i have no doubt that a runner of his caliber will be able to get through this while honeydew able to get through chatternook and that reward from search the skies is an esper which puts him one esper away but a couple checks behind still and really needs a 10th esper to come up quickly so he doesn't lose more ground to jack here yeah and i actually like the play here by jack to just go because Jack has already used up a lot of the very, very fast peekable checks that can give characters. So, yes, it never feels great spending this five minutes just sort of walking through Kefka's tower and playing with Moogle charms. But if you consider the time it would take to fly to a new spot, pick up a pick up a boss, and then even if it pays off, that's half your skip. So in that case, it would pay off. But if that first check fails, then you've probably wasted most of the time you would have gained via check skip already. So kind of understand just going for it if you're confident in your ability to push through the bosses at the end yeah my only question for that would be would it ever behoove him to take his party fully up the right side do the inferno spot do the dragon fight and then take his party fully up the middle and do the toilet atma fight and the the other dragon there uh, I, i'm sure that that's ever so slightly longer but i do wonder if it would behoove him in the long run with the extra levels he'd get, the extra magic points, you know, giving him better damage on throw, etc. So that's a tough one, uh, and something I'll definitely want to ask him about in the interview, what his thoughts are versus the skip versus, uh, you know, just walking up the tower. This does help keep the scaling on statues down ever so slightly, so that could factor into it as well. But definitely curious on, uh, on Jack's thought process on that, uh, you know, regardless of the outcome of the race here. Uh, looks like Honeydew going through and uh, is fighting his second dragon here while doing the Tritox spot as well. Yeah, I will say, I mean, we've mentioned several times that Jack is one of the OGs of Rando. He's been around practically forever in this community, one of the very best of the community. 
So I would imagine, looks like he's mid 40s and levels. I would imagine he has no no worries about whether he's going to be able to get through the fights along the way. So might just be decided, you know what? Yes, it would be extra levels, but doesn't really need him. Yeah, it's simply a matter of comfort. And if he's comfortable with it, go get it. <laughs> and we see Honeydew getting it. Takes care of that dragon there. Learns Flare and Stop. Gets a Magus Rod. Uh, also picks up some Genji armor. So I do think that Honeydew's going to have more levels. He's going to have more spells. He's going to have more Ultima. He's likely going to have a much faster final Kefka. His statues might be about the same. It may actually be even a little longer. Having a Pearl Lance instead of an Ore Lance is very scary, especially if Mog runs into Goddess. So it's going to be very interesting to see because, you know, Jack is already basically a third. Uh, I would say actually about a halfway up the uh, the tower already running up here. So by the time Honeydew gets to Kefka's tower, and this is assuming this is an Esper here, he's probably going to be a full climb behind. Or full walk, I should say, which you know could be upwards of five minutes of time. I don't know that he can recoup that. And to answer a question from chat, why are there counters over people's heads? So part of the flag set is there is auto condemn and auto overcast on this flag set. So Goddess's Edict, basically, after seven checks, there is a condemn status placed on the party, meaning after 60 seconds, give or take, uh, they will turn into zombies. So instead of perishing, instead of dying, they turn into zombies and you have to use revivifies to bring them back. That is just a Genji helmet for Honeydew. That is an unmitigated disaster for him. He really needed that to be an Esper. So right now, Team Minerva uh, looking to be firmly in control versus Team Doomgaze at the moment. Uh, I am sure that is making his teammates uh, Nobody War and I believe Fiery Blizzard as uh, as Jack and Mrs. teammates. Uh, that is going to make his teammates very happy, uh, you know, much to the chagrin of Honeydew's teammates, uh, which are PB&J and Tybalt. Yeah, as you can see by the Chocobo heads above the names, Honeydew's team won the first match, so... If Jackamus holds on to this lead, that will tie the series up 1-1, and that will bring us to a Game 3, which I believe is currently targeted, should it happen, for Saturday, March 15th. So this Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern, or excuse me, uh, Friday. Friday. Yeah. Friday, I apologize, at 9 p.m. Eastern, between Fiery Blizzard and Tybalt 2010. Let's see if uh, Jackamus can hold it out. And we do know that Honeydew is on the right path. This peekable check here, uh, this is going to get him skip as well uh, once he completes and gets his 10th Esper here. So Honeydew is going to be at the statues with more levels, uh, but will likely be about a statue behind by the time he gets there. So because he's going to get that skip, it is going to behoove him uh, you know, to really press forward. It's one of the wild things that at the levels that these runners are at, Honeydew at an hour into a seed is probably feeling like he's not in a great place right now. Uh, and, you know, for a lot of us, an hour into a seed would be like, oh yeah, I'm almost at go mode. This is going to be great. But these runners, they know how good each other are. So very nervy times probably for both of them right now. Meanwhile, Jack getting through that first boss. And so, yeah, like you said, I think it looks like Jack is going to be finishing up that first lane about the same time Honeydew enters the tower at the statue. So still very close. Honeydew's additional levels might help push him through, as you were mentioning. Even if not, like even something where, hey, there are a bunch of deaths on tier one that you have to take time to revivify and heal up, you know, that could close that gap right there. And hello, Poltergeist. This is actually great to see. This is exactly what you would want, in my opinion. Because this is where you have the most people. And frankly, Spicy Chicken, Poltergeist, is the scariest of the statues. Poltergeist is now stopped. 
we kind of can just do whatever we want to it. Sword Tech 7 is coming out. Some magic is coming out. We have bio. So, you know, this poltergeist not really going to pose much of a threat here, which is great for Jack. Uh, not great for Honeydew, but there is the final Kefka unlock. There is the skip all at once. There is a tonic looted and a dog pet. And so, you know, Honeydew is going to be closing this gap a little bit, but he's going to be behind a crane fight and he's going to be behind, be behind a poltergeist. So can he make that up? Maybe if there's an economizer for sale here, he did just find a gem box. He finds some earrings, which are really cool, but not really what he's looking for. Edgar, meanwhile, 6 HP in a dream, that's 5 more than you need, doesn't turn into a zombie, so Merton effectively ineffective. And Pulte down. Honeydew going to get a third dragon here, so not comfortable with either his magic situation or his levels or something. Isn't feeling it quite yet. This is going to give even a little bit more time to Jack. Uh, so might just be a case of Honeydew wanting auto shell. Not exactly certain here. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine you would do this just for auto shell. I mean, it's nice, but it's not not super impactful, especially when you're already level 45 or whatever he is. Yeah, I don't might know need if Ultima. This, yeah, this might be learning Ultima on another character, or this might be trying to just get some extra levels. Could be a prep for maybe a fourth dragon if you want to really push it and do a lane of the tower. Yeah, it just depends how he's feeling. Uh, you know, I, I will say Honeydew does tend to be a little bit more conservative, uh, you know, than, than Jackamus does. Jack is generally pretty aggressive. So this is not super surprising. You know, we kind of saw that with Jack's routing early, attempting to take on that early Magimaster and, you know, all of those things early on in the seed. But that aggression has gotten him to this point. Looks like we have Northern Cross come out. Nobody gets uh, frozen here. So that is huge for Jack as well. Not going to be having to struggle through what would be a very, very annoying situation. And Honeydew is able to get through that dragon. We'll see, does he go to Kefka, Kefka's Tower now? Or is he going to do something else in the interim? And it looks like all vanilla statues as well, Chad is pointing out. Uh, somebody forgot to hit the button. Yeah, meanwhile, Jack, no luck at, no luck Why on the ceiling. Why am I being blamed for that? Come on now. I said somebody. I didn't name names. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sad wolf noise. Yeah, Jack managing to steal a safety, but probably not what you were hoping to steal. And that gal with steal and jump is pretty useless here. I guess you can use him as an item bot if you're really desperate. Now you could steal a drainer, which we could throw. Well, stole a, stole a safety bit, which, cool, I guess. It's a thing that exists. By the way, Honey is nine minutes behind. Nine minutes. Okay, and uh, being reported to us by our very good restreamer, Saberwolf, that Honey is stepping on the switches about nine minutes behind when Jack stepped on the switches. Or if you compare to confirm via distance... Jack is basically two lanes ahead and three bosses. Actually, he got skipped, apparently, so actually he's only five minutes behind-ish. Yeah, he's he's about four and a half or five minutes behind. Uh, and it just, you know, depends what it, what's the lane situation, how is this going to go. Mog is jumping with a Pearl Lance on Honeydew's side. This is the lane that you want for this Mog, so... That is fantastic on uh, Honeydew. Maybe he's not jumping with a Pearl Lance, or we got an extra one. I think we got an extra one from the White Dragon, actually. So it throws the Pearl Lance, jumping with a Pearl Lance. going to be big damage coming out here. That's 35k pumped into Doom already. And not a whole lot left here to do. This Stout Spear throw may clear this Doom out very quickly. While, uh, while Doom is just wasting wasting time that stout spear does not do it looks like we are going to get some more jumping here 
and we have a goddess who is going to get jumped on on Jack's side, and this is perfect for him as well because this Mog has an Aura Lance, and, uh, well, Goddess does not do particularly well be when being jumped on. Yeah, Goddess's big thing is both the thunder damage, which we're seeing right now, but more importantly, the love token if you get hit with physical, if you hit her with physical attack. Whoever hits her now has a 50% chance to take damage instead from future physical attacks. But jump is technically not a physical fight command in the same way, so not going to even come out and not going to have to worry about it. Yeah, I'm a little scared for Mog here, though. He's down uh, pretty low. I think we need at least a three-pack here of jumps, maybe another four-pack. Wombat comes out. That's going to remove Setzer again from battle. One boing, two boing, three boing. Goddess down for Jackamus. Honeydew doesn't have a Moogle Charm on, gets an encounter. Going to remedy that. Strago, go ahead and uh, go ahead and take that that Moogle Charm. Do something for the party. But Jack is done with his statues, so he is two full lanes ahead here. Looks like we're going to keep that Setzer as a zombie. Jack doesn't care, which makes sense. That Setzer's not doing a ton for his party. Uh, looks like we're heading on in. Espers are set. So Jack is on the switches officially. 108.45 for those switches. There is a 22 second delay on Jack's stream, by the way. And we are being informed there is about a 20 second delay on the stream for Jackamus as well. So realistically, this is actually about a 108.25 then. So get your guesses into chat as to how long you think that this here fight is going to take this whole climb. Uh, I'm going to say, say exactly 10 minutes. Uh, see, I think Jack's in a good spot. I'm thinking more like 9.30. Ooh. Meanwhile, Honeydew is at level 57, which is crazy. Yeah, so yeah, Honeydew, will be will doing, do that. <laughs> Honeydew will be doing a lot of damage and uh, might be able to catch up here on this final Kefka, depending on how long Jack takes, because Honeydew is going to be flying through these bosses. Looks like Jack has found his Fire Rod target. X-Zone hits the, the long arm. Fire Rod pops off on the, the head there. Fire Rod number two going to pop off on the head. Uh, unfortunately, everybody's favorite are Polarity. So, yeah, that's, that's not exactly what you want to see from a time perspective. Head, I believe, should be very close to being down, if not already down here. Maybe a Ninja Star will finish it off. And then Mog will be jumping on the short arm. Only potentially risky thing here is like Realm gets bopped and crit and dies before going into the next phase. Uh, but he does get her in the back row, so should be safe from here. Pulty down on Honeydew's side, so he has Goddess left but going to be about two tiers behind in Final Kefka. So if you are a Team Doomgaze fan, you are you are hoping against hope that something catastrophic happens to Jack. But if you are a fan of Game 3s, I know I'm a fan of Game 3s, generally speaking, uh, you're cheering for Jack to get through this. No fear. Let's go. Mog comes down, lands his jump on the way into Tier 2, pushing a little bit of extra damage there. Yep, meanwhile, Jack going to show off the value of Mute here. In case you're not familiar with this fight, there are four parts. There is Tiger, which is the Tiger face. 
there is that does mostly annoying zombie ice attacks, freezing, something you want to kill quickly. You've got the blue flexing guy, which is primarily physical attacks. You've got tools in the center, which is the girl, which can be killed with instant death, should you so choose. And then there is magic, which is the guy on the left pointing to the left. He can be muted, and ideally you want to mute him because he his spells are a lot of waste of time. So having mute is very nice. Yeah, mute is phenomenal here. Stop is kind of okay. Instant death is great. We also see Terra still being a Sword Tech 6 mage instead of Sword Tech 7. I love this. Uh, being able to utilize her magic power and really push that AoE damage that is able to be penetrating damage, non-elemental, and just do a world of work here. Between 3 and 3,000 and 4,500 damage, pushing about 10k around by herself, which is just phenomenal. Meanwhile, Honeydew is launching Ultimas over at Goddess. He did go in here with his magic party, so he had he was relying on Bolt. Not able to use Bolt here. Didn't want to use Flare, just queued up some Ultimas. And that is Goddess down for Honeydew. So he's going to be on the switches about four minutes behind. Yeah, and uh, some nice information from chat here shout out to the schwanz 27 who is one of our very loyal restreamers and valued community members pointing out that sword tech six doesn't split damage so on a party like this where you have three or four up to four bosses hitting at the same time that damage adds up a lot so very nice yeah never be afraid to stack those magic power espers on your sword tech user i know everyone loves putting their strength espers on there but sometimes sword tech six is is just better uh, it, it's quite fast. It does a lot of damage. It doesn't split the damage. And we're up to tier 3 for Jack already. Just blitzed that tier 2. So, yeah, I don't see, barring something really bizarre happening, which we've seen all sorts of things in, in this uh, community and, you know, in these, these flags. Barring something really, really odd happening, Honeydew is a full four minutes behind now. He did make up a little bit of time on the statues. He made up some time with the skip. But is he going to be able to make up four minutes from here? I'm not seeing it. Yeah, and the other thing as well is that... So this part, there are two. There's the girl on the left who just died, has just under 10,000 HP. So you need to kill her first because she heals and revives the other part. And then there's the one in front, which is the blue guy. His big thing, if you get him under 10,000, he does train, which is basically every annoying status effect in the game. Or Medio, which is about 1,500 damage on everybody. And then when he dies, he casts Calmness up to two times, which is a physical attack that instant kills you. So that's why we saw the Golem come out, because Golem basically ends that. So the only concern here is maybe Medio goes off and kills someone, but even if he loses the one character that's low, still be fine. And there is Calmness, and it is blocked, and Tier 3 already down for Jackamus. So he is three full tiers ahead of Honeydew. This is, uh, this is probably all she wrote for this race for Team Doomgaze. Uh, Team Minerva looking to push it through. Team Minerva went 3-3 three and three in the air quote regular season here, and has been winning. They've won 2-1 and one and 2-1 and one in both the quarters and semis just barely getting through all of their matches but all you got to do is just win more than you lose i know real john madden of me uh, but that's exactly what they've been doing all throughout this so we will see phase four here we go any ultimate counters any weird things coming out from kefka we're gonna see a medio probably not Yeah, the thing for Kefka is he will do Fallen 1, which we're about to see, which knocks everybody down to 1 HP. If you've got a Mega Elixir, that works perfect. Other options are Health or a Cure 3, something like that. So at this point of the fight, though, Jack is perfectly happy burning the Mega Elixir and getting a full heal along with it. So Yeah, it says goodbye to an Aura Lance as well. This yeah. is probably pushing us to fall in one. So he's going to sit in his menu a bit here, I think. He can send Mog up in the air, but I think everyone else is kind of going to chill here and just wait until we get that goner phase to happen, during which Kefka will not be countering. So it makes it very safe 
and here comes that goner face and now he can just unload excalibur goes any shields he has will go the biggest nastiest spells he has can go and that's kind of what jack is looking to do here but this fight has been just absolutely beautiful on jack's part and there it is ggs ggs jack in this what a what a wonderful performance and wonderful final kefka fight by him that was super fast yeah the official time 116 43 which i believe is he started at like 109 and a half so that's seven minutes seven and a half minutes and i believe the lowest of anybody in chat was actually my suggest someone suggested 901 which was utter butter nice name and even that was high so jack just flying through tier tears and kefka there yeah extremely efficient extremely well done on that by jack and we do see here honeydew is in tier two we have the big blue button doing what the big big blue button do which is well a ton of damage and we'll see if we can get jack in here for an interview as well talk about the race and uh how his team is feeling here how he is feeling and it'll be just a couple moments before we get him in so let's talk more about ultima and how tier two does not like it well i would like to talk about how honeydew right now has three party members frozen thanks to some very bad luck with uh you best be frozen of the tiger yeah. north cross is rude and it is especially annoying in this seed because normally you would have at least some kind of fire. Maybe it's a even like a fire one that you could just cast in your own party and heal everybody up. No fire spells, so just sort of have to wait it out. And while you're waiting it out, hey, you see the condemned counters tick down. It's just brutal. So while we are waiting, we, this, now that Jack has won, that makes the score here one to one for the teams. So Team Doomgaze, Team Minerva will be facing off a third time for all the marbles. It will be Fiery Blizzard versus Tybalt 2010. That is happening Friday, March 15th at 9 p.m. Uh, I do not believe we have decided on the channel yet. We'll likely be here on FF6 Worlds Collide, but keep an eye on the Discord. And of course, it will be posted there ahead of time. Everybody will be a great match. And both those runners, you know, are very good runners. Also, both both uh, eight and no, I believe. Or excuse, me, Blizzard is eight and no, so should be a very good match here. Yeah, Fiery Blizzard yet to lose this tournament has won his races going into last week anyway by an average of about twenty minutes. Uh, last week, I think he won by about five or so, so it was much much closer, uh, but was you know still victorious. Hey, he's going to look to put on the perfect run basically through this tournament to go 9-0 and and really propel a Team Minerva to that ch potential championship. So can Tybalt stop the undefeated monster in Fiery Blizzard? Uh, you'll have to tune in Friday at 9 Eastern to see that uh, and you know see who comes out victorious, Doomgaze or Minerva in this wonderful Warring Triad Team Tournament. And we have tier three for Honeydew here. Out of juice for Ultima has juice again, courtesy of an elixir. We see him popping into his menu. We didn't talk a ton about this, but weight tricking, very important here. Uh, kind of as you alluded to as well, you know, watching that timer count down. Well, one way to stop the timer from counting down is to be in your menu while things are happening. And speaking of things happening, Champion Jackamus has joined us, pushing his team to one and one, all in Fiery Blizzard's hands for Team Minerva now. GG to you, sir, on a very well run race. Thank you. So, what were your general feelings about the seed overall and how well you played? Um, I like seeds like that. You know, you start off with a character with money toss, early experience egg, that's enough to get you started. 
You start with one of the ladies, they can use all the best weapons. And, you know, picked up jump set just right in the uh, Nourish Weapon Shop, and I think the first Esper I found had stop on it, so I'm just knowing right ahead that I've got, you know, solo characters for each of the statues, so it's like, alright, this is probably not going to be too bad. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you got there significantly earlier than Honeydew did. You made that early play up to Narsh, and that, that I think, made a lot of difference because Honeydew got that experience egg probably at least 20 minutes later than you did, so eventually got it, but was at a lower level for a lot of the seed. One of the other things we noted near the end, you did the first two Magitex, then you bailed out before getting the guaranteed progression item three was that was there any thought about going for that since you were close to close to character skip and only one esper away or did you just no. decide okay no no uh that last bit of magitech takes too long it wouldn't save time over skip and i'm not worried about having to stack parties or anything like that to get through the statues because i'm set for all three of them i've got stop on all my three characters for poltergeist I've got ways to damage Goddess outside the fight command, and Doom is easy. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, because that was definitely something we were speculating on, was whether you'd go for Magitek 3, or after getting after you left and got your 10th Esper, whether you'd look around for a 10th character. But, you know, if you were very confident, that makes perfect sense why you did what you did. Yeah, and like, especially with uh, Shadow showing up with Throw later on, it's like, well, I can supplement my... GP rain in case I run into Goddess with that party, so I have a bit more offense to get through quicker. Absolutely, and I mean, it was a very good match. Uh, Honeydew was probably about five minutes behind, primarily due to some unfortunate Fleet River, which had Doom Gaze at the exact level, but outside of that, you guys were very, very close pretty much the entire seed. And a uh, oh. GG's to Honeydew there, finishing with an official time of 1.23.59. It's about seven minutes behind. Yeah, GG's to both runners. Phenomenal race. Right on. I'll, maybe I'll watch it back for a lark in a little while. Yeah, I like seeds where you do tons of damage. Offense is king and worlds collide, and when you have lots of it, things just go well. It's nice. Yeah, kind of flashing back to the very early part of the seed, just wanted your thoughts on, uh, you know, how were you feeling after the Magimaster situation, where you had taken a couple fights and then you ran into Magimaster, had to reset? Did that change your routing at all or change anything up, or did it all just kind of stay the same? Uh, it was basically just keep an eye out for Berserk, because I know there's a character that I'm probably going to need later. Berserk didn't show up, but by that point... I knew that Magic Master wouldn't pose a problem for me since I had offense up and going at that point. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Don't have to worry about it when you can just clear it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it was either I'll come back there whenever I find Berserk or whenever Terra learns uh, Tech 6, basically. Yeah, and that Sword Tech 6, uh, we kind of talked about this in the booth a little bit, but you were doing immense amounts of damage with that Sword Tech 6, really making Terra a Sword Tech 6 mage, more so even than using Sword Tech 7, which is more conventional. I uh, just thought that was really, really well executed, especially in Tier 2, where she was just crushing it on Tier 2 for you. Uh, she rolled high on starting magic power. It was over 40, which is... I'm not one to worry about stats, but I know magic power affects your damage a little bit more than others, but... There were plenty of relics to boost damage as well, so that helped. Uh, I used Tech 7 maybe two or three times throughout the whole run. It was either use a, the Stunner Tech 6 or just swing away with the Man Eater, basically. Yeah, definitely. Well, you you ran again a heck of a race. Uh, you know, you got Team Minerva back up to, to level footing on this particular race. It all falls to your teammate Fiery Blizzard now going in against Tibalt. Uh, how are you feeling going into that race Friday? Are we cautiously optimistic? Do we got any fighting words, any bulletin board material? Uh, just where's your mindset at your team for, you know, trying to become a champion yet again? 
Well, uh, I've, I've done my part there, so uh, unfortunately no nobody wore, uh, didn't have much luck earlier in the week, but uh, I've kept us in this thing, so it's up to Blizzard to win it for us, basically, and you know, uh, I feel pretty fortunate to be on the same team as Fiery Blizzard, uh, I mean, hasn't lost a race yet, uh, probably, I think you guys seeded it based on, like, I'm assuming that I was seeded as the top racer on my team or whatever, it really should have been Blizzard, Blizzard's just absolutely killing it, absolutely smoking it, uh, tournament MVP for sure, win or lose, uh, whenever that race happens later this week. Yeah, for sure. At worst, being 8-1, and one, at best, being 9-0, and oh, it's going to be very difficult to argue against that record, regardless of the outcome. So, yeah, uh, I think that race is happening right here on Friday, so um, everyone should tune in. It should be a pretty darn good one. And, you know, hopefully it works out for my team, and then I can uh, just, you know, gloat and rub it all in your faces again that I've won another tournament, because... I love being a sore winner. I really do. Always good to have a heel. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> well, I, I think I'm out of questions and uh, an idle banter as well. Uh, Arusta, anything for champion Jackamus here in the booth with us after his uh, phenomenal race tonight? Uh, nothing on my end. Again, uh, GG's. Uh, it was a great race. Thank you for letting us comment. Thank you for letting us restream it. I'm going to go ahead and take us out. So, no, you're not. You. Let's go, Bruins. Now you can't fight. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad we got that. Uh, so, thank you, everyone, for watching. As mentioned several times, the final race will be Friday at 9 p.m. between Fiery Blizzard and Tybalt 2010. I believe it. It's still TBD on the channel, but very likely here on FF6 Worlds Collide on the Twitch channel, or if you're watching on YouTube in the future, it will, of course, be posted there as well. Thank you to everyone who's watching. My name has been Arusta. Uh, my co-commentator today was Possum. Also, shout-outs to our trackers behind, behind the scenes, Kat and... I am going to mispronounce this, but Narulian. And then also... Big shout outs to Saberwolf for keeping us on track by restreaming the whole thing. There we go. I was waiting on that one. And so uh, thank you for everyone for watching. Uh, one other thing you might have noticed if you were watching on Twitch that this is our anniversary of becoming a Twitch affiliate. So just in case anyone's not, not familiar with it, being a Twitch affiliate, you know, means we can get subs and all of our subs go to charity. So thank you anyone who's ever subbed or will sub in the future. Or if you just want to watch, that's appreciated as well. Have a good one, everyone.